Hello and thank you for watching my video. If you like it, please hit the thumbs up button. If you don't like it, please don't hit the thumbs down button. So this is a video that's going to show you how to replace the automatic transmission fluid in your 370Z. Uh, first thing you need to do is drop the drain plug out. It's going to require a 19 millimeter uh, socket is what I used. You could use a wrench. Socket's just a little bit easier. And uh, if you watched my other video, I did a video at 30,000 miles with some tips. My fluid was really dark. Um, we're at 39,000 miles right now. And not that you can really tell in this video, uh, but the fluid color is almost the proper color. It's still kind of brown, but it's got pink to it. And then what I just pointed out was the fluid level, uh, how you check the fluid level with the uh, five millimeter uh, plug uh, when your fluid is full or when you're checking your fluid. But this is um, just dropping the fluid out of the pan right now. And uh, this is about the color that I would like to see my fluid as it comes out. So you want to get your car up in the air and the best way to tell if your car is level is get yourself a little uh, magnetic level and stick it to the oil pan and then uh, as you're jacking your car up you know get it level. So typically when I work on anything I never use uh, power tools, air tools, I like using hand tools but because there are so many screws on this automatic transmission uh, cover uh, I'm going to go ahead and use an air impact and remove uh, all of the screws out. And I do have a magnetic tray on the ground so I can just drop the wrench and put the screw in the magnetic tray and it pulls it out of the wrench and it saves a little bit of time. So from here I left a few strategic screws in place. Um, this is where the job is going to get messy. So be very careful when you're removing uh, these last few screws. I typically leave three in, um, one on each side and then one on the rear. And when that last screw comes out and you lower the pan down, be careful, don't, don't mess up like I did because there's still a quart of fluid in this pan. So you can see where I, I hit the uh, cable for the um, O2 sensor and uh, fluid went all over my floor so that took a lot of cleaning um, and like I said this is the messy part you want to keep your pan um, underneath the transmission um, this transmission fluid is going to drop out of your pan for quite a few minutes and even when you're putting it back together fluid is still going to be dripping out of your transmission but this, this is the transmission with the pan off at this point so once we get our pan off and we get the the fluid kind of cleaned up on the floor around us uh, then we're going to loosen all the bolts that are holding the filter on be very careful with your 370z filter in your manual and everywhere you find um, online whatnot these filters are one-time use and I'm going to show you the filter um, in a little bit I'll show you the difference between the 350Z filter and a 370Z filter um, but again this filter when you look at it it's easy enough to pull this filter down and clean it um, there are a bunch of screws there are three different sizes of screws that hold this filter on. You don't really have to remember which, where each screw goes uh, because when you put the screw in, it'll either look too long or too short um, opposed to the filter. But when you stick the screw in, you want to have about a half inch from the filter to the screw head showing. So now we're at a point where we're removing the final screws from our, uh, pan, our filter and then the filter will uh, drop right off and you'll get even more automatic transmission fluid on your garage floor. 
So what I found was the long screws go at the front of the pan or the front of the filter. There is one short screw that goes at the front of the filter. You'll find that one pretty easily. And then all the rest of the short of the medium size screws will go around um, the left and right side and the back side of the filter. Back meaning towards the back of the car. I had thought I had cut out enough of the video where you didn't have to see me pull out each and every one of these screws, uh, but be assured that there's about 25 screws which hold your automatic transmission filter onto the car. Nissan did not shortchange you at all when they uh, put this filter into the transmission. So here's the filter coming off and there you see it it's just a metal filter with a light screen inside and now we're going to roll out from under the car and start cleaning up everything all right so now we're in the middle of the garage and then here's your filter and as i wipe away you see how clean the filter gets and, and I get it, this filter will probably last the lifetime of the car. Uh, there's not really a need to replace this filter. I would say if this is the first time of you uh, draining your automatic transmission fluid, replacing the fluid, I would say, you know, 30,000, 50,000, whatever mileage you're at, remove this filter. Uh, main thing you want to look for is you don't want to see any metal chunks. Uh, resting on this screen. Nothing good comes from having metal chunks in your filter. Wipe it clean. I kind of teetered um, on running this filter through the solvent tank. Uh, I don't use traditional solvent. I use simple green and I thought well you know if I didn't get all the simple green off, if I didn't blow it dry enough, whatever, uh, I might take the risk of contaminating my new automatic transmission fluid and then my job's wasted so instead of uh, cleaning the filter in a solvent tank I just went ahead and I wiped the screen clean and you can see that with just a shop towel um, that screen does it does come clean it does wipe off and and comes clean so good there uh, as long as it looks nice clean and shiny and you're happy with it you're good to go alright the next thing we're going to touch is going to be the magnets so in your pan are two magnets there's two indentations in the pan and those magnets sit on top of that and it kind of holds them in place They're, they hook up to the pan Okay. and uh, you know they just stick to the pan you see me peeling them off and I'm taking my rag and I'm wiping all the uh, dirt degree debris and grime and it's really just uh, metallic uh, metallic material that's stuck to these magnets so that black stuff you see is uh, parts of the transmission so there's the rest of the fluid going into my drain pan and then we want to wipe our uh, pan clean the inside of our pan clean go ahead and clean off your um, rubber gasket so this like I said this is the second time that I've had this uh, transmission cover off of the car the rubber gasket the rubber seal that they put around the edges is really nice it's a good quality uh, rubber seal so thanks Nissan for doing that I went ahead and, and used the same same seal as before, but just like your transmission filter, I'm not sure that this seal is readily available. You can probably source it from your Nissan dealer. Um, I, I know online it's really difficult to find anything for the automatic transmission online for sale. Um, I would like to have uh, automatic transmission filter sitting on the shelf in case something ever happened to mine I could just pop a new one in or if I could get one you know, every time I drain my automatic transmission fluid I'd go ahead and 
have a have a new filter ready that I could install. So I really like to uh, scrub that pan and get it clean inside and out. I like to have the inside of the pan um, clean. I like to have the outside, the bottom of the pan clean. And then that is your fill level. So there is your, your plug that you're going to use when we f um, fill the transmission and we drain it and here's our magnets going back on and now the pan is ready to be put back on the car the filters clean and it's ready to go back on the car so here is a brand new 350z filter and then in my right hand is your 370z so you see they're different um, but it's the same material the 370z is just a little bit larger so next I want to dump my drain pan into jugs to see how much fluid I pulled out of the car. Um, just so you know, uh, if you you know don't go overboard or whatever, uh, like I typically do, um, six quarts is about what you're going to need. So I'm going to put five quarts into this one jug, uh, and I dropped at least a quart on the ground and I'll show you later where I pump in uh, seven quarts so I overfill the transmission by one quart what can it hurt right I'm not driving down the road with an extra quart of transmission fluid in my car but I do have an, an extra quart of transmission fluid while the car is idling and getting up to temperature uh, to help uh, dilute all that fluid that's in the torque converter uh, when it comes out and gets into the transmission, um, that extra quart of new fluid will help dilute whatever's um, coming through. So um, my fluid will stay pink for a little bit longer. So right there in that jug you see five quarts and then another quart on the ground. And then later on you will see me uh, remove one full quart out of the transmission. All right, here it goes. This job kind of sucks. Remember, the long bolts, the long screws go at the front of the car, in the filter at the front of the car. The medium length screws, so that screw I just put in right there is the wrong screw. So listen to me, learn from my mistakes. The long screws go into the front of the filter front of the car side of the filter there's one very short screw it goes in the front of the filter the the medium size screws go on the left the right and the rear towards the rear of the car of the filter so right now you've watched me put in four long screws in the wrong position so keep that in mind when you're doing your car all right, so I've got all the screws in place right now, and this is how they should look. They should all be sticking out about a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch out of the filter, uh, and that's how you can tell that all your screws are in the proper locations. So I'm taking a 10 millimeter socket with an extension, and I'm just screwing them in until they are hand tight. So now that I've got all my screws into the filter hand tight, I'm going over each one of these screws with my torque wrench. I'm using an inch pound torque wrench and I am putting the proper torque on all these screws. It is very important to use a torque wrench on your filter and your automatic transmission um, cover. Uh, this way you don't break off any of those bolts in your transmission. Uh, I promise you nothing good, nothing fun is going to come out of you laying on your back drilling over your head trying to uh, tap out any of those screws. So with the filter torqued into place 
I'm going to go ahead and take a shop towel one more time and wipe everything dry. Um, wipe the transmission where the pan's going to mesh up to it, mount up to it, and make sure that's clean. And then I'm going to put my pan into place. So once I get my pan lined up, I'm going to put a screw in. And normally what I do is I start with like three or four screws and I put them in um, different locations. So I started on the back left corner and that's going to hold the pan up so I can it's a little bit easier for me to balance that way and then I jumped over to the right side and put one in so now the pan is in place and I don't have to fight with one hand holding the pan into place um, it just makes it easier and now I go to the front corner and once you get three or four screws in you'll find that the rest of the screws will go in almost perfectly. You don't have to fight them. Um, do not tighten any of these screws down. Don't tighten the screws down. Just leave them loose. Um, by finger tight, I mean leave like a millimeter from uh, between the pan and the transmission so the pan will wiggle back and forth and it'll help you get those screws lined up and in place a little bit faster. All right, so here I'm finishing up um, getting my screws hand tight with my 10 millimeter socket, uh, and then I'm going to finish up with my torque wrench. And what I typically do is I go around the pan, and there's, if you get your shop manual, it's probably gonna tell you to go from the center of the pan um, on each side and work your way out. Um, like I said, this is the second time I've had this pan off. Uh, using a torque wrench you're not going to squash that gasket it, the gasket is a good quality gasket I'm just going to go around and I'm going to torque every one of these screws and I'm going to torque every one of these screws twice so I'm going to go around this pan twice with my torque wrench and make sure that all these screws are at the perfect torque specification alright just finishing up with the uh, Torquing it down for the last time. And then once, you, uh, once you've touched every one of these bolts twice, go ahead and make sure that the wires for your O2 sensors are on the little brackets. Uh, make sure that the clips are clipped into place on the front of the transmission. Um, make everything pretty the way you uh, got the car from the dealership. Uh, don't leave any wires and stuff hanging down because you never know when you're going to go down the road and hit a branch or something. You don't want that branch to grab one of these wires and rip it off the bottom of your car. A new O2 sensor is not cheap and it's not a lot of fun to get up underneath your car and put new sensors into your uh, exhaust. All right, so there is our fill plug right there. Um, but where I'm pointing, that is where your dipstick would go. And some dipsticks who have done videos and talk about changing the automatic transmission fluid, that's where they would have you fill uh, your fluid is um, where the dipstick hole is. And I believe that dipstick hole is just residual uh, probably, you know, maybe they were, were going to put a dipstick when this car was designed, engineered, whatever, when this transmission, or this transmission is the same transmission that's in the Infiniti G37, and it might have a dipstick, I don't know. Um, but I know from my experience working with GM cars, uh, the way to fill the transmission, the easy way to fill the transmission is to pump it up through the uh, check hole, to the, the hole where you check your fluid level. So I'm using just a regular Lubramatic pump. Uh, you can get one of these for about seven or eight dollars. This is a, I don't know, it might be the difficult way to do it and I'll sit and I'll pump the way I'm doing it here for a while and then towards the end when I'm putting this, the 
third or fourth quart in, I'll just set the quart bottle down on the ground and lay on my side and pump. And it probably takes uh, maybe three minutes to do a quart of oil, do a quart of automatic transmission fluid this way. You can also get, um, I think guys are using like sprayers, like garden sprayers, and putting seven quarts of fluid in a garden sprayer, pressurizing it, and squirting it into the transmission. That way, um, again, I, I don't, I'm not gonna be the one to tell you which way's better. This is the way that I've always done it. And you can see the bottle I'm using. I am using OEM Nissan Matic S transmission fluid. Your car calls for Matic S transmission fluid. All right, fluids in the car. And this is um, the little ODB reader that I use. Uh, unfortunately, I wish the screen would show up better in the video. But we're grabbing the streaming data off of the ECU. So our goal it was to get the transmission up to temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if you can really see that. We're at 134. Uh, it took probably about 15 minutes of the car idling for the transmission to get to 134. And I'm kind of impatient at this point. I want to get this job done. So 134 is good enough. I'm going to go ahead and roll underneath the car and drop out the fluid. I'm not going to um, pull out all of it though, but here we go. So put your drain pan back underneath the hole that takes the five millimeter hex or Allen, whatever you want to call it. It's a five millimeter screw that little plug and we're just going to drop that plug out and you're going to watch a lot of fluid dump out I already told you earlier in the video that I overfilled my transmission by one quart so six quarts would probably do you well um, but I went ahead and I put seven quarts in just so I could dilute whatever comes out of the torque converter, whatever's in the transmission cooler in the front of the car. Uh, and you see that it, what's coming out is a nice, pretty pink color. So maybe it worked out in my favor, maybe not. Um, I'm going to do this again at 60,000 miles. Like I said, when I started on the video, I'm at 39,000 miles. I did do the automatic transmission when I bought the car at 30,000 miles and it was dark brown. I took my car out for a ride this morning. Today was the day after I did this. Um, the car shifted great. It ran great. It's amazing how much better the car feels when you have new automatic transmission fluid in it. So it's kind of dripping now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in. And uh, I, I'm perfectly fine with having a little bit too much fluid in my car. Um, so once you get the plug in, go ahead and tighten down that plug. You don't have to over torque it, just get it tight. It does have a crush washer. And you're pretty much done now. Just drop your car and go for a ride and enjoy the way that new transmission fluid feels in your car. Thanks for watching my video and I hope I deserve a thumbs up from you.